Monday, 2017, scheduled at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, it's currently 1 and 6 Eastern Time, and this is the second session of the hearing that was uh, continued by the referee that was held on April 25, 2017. And uh, once again, I'm appeal to referee Jones. That's J-O-N-E-S. I've been assigned your case today, which is appeals document number 1749241AA. This is King Taylor versus Jeff Water Nissan, Mr. Taylor. Uh, I believe you have submitted a witness list for the prior hearings. Have there any uh, changes, additions, subtractions to your witnesses? Um, no, I'm going to keep the same witnesses as before. Okay, and is there anyone there with you, or do you have anyone to represent you today? Not today. Okay, very good. Um, and uh, any change in your address from the last session? No. Okay. Um, definitely is uh, Jeff Weiler Nissan. Is there anything there for the employer? Okay, I don't believe the employer is joining us. I'm going to verify that. So I'll be right back in the check our box. So just be patient. I'll be right back. Okay, the employer um, does not, has not appeared. Um, so uh, what we have here again, Mr. Taylor, then is your appeal of a determination date of March 8, 2017, finding the claim of voluntarily quit suitable work without good cause attributable to the employment and the claim was disqualified from receiving benefits. Uh, this matter is before the appeals branch by Commissioner Order Number 1379498, dated April 4, 2017, remaining for a deliberate referee hearing and decision. So that once again, our issue for today is whether the claim was discharged from misconduct or dishonesty or voluntarily quit suitable work without good cause attributable to the employment. Um, now we're going to proceed with the hearing. We'll pick up where we left off, and so I'm going to uh, swear you back in, Mr. Taylor. Um, I think uh, I did review the hearing from the prior session, so many of the questions I would have had for you have already been answered, but I still have just a couple more to ask you. Uh, so uh, if you bear with me, I'm going to start with uh, finishing up my questions first. I'll give you a chance then to add anything additional that hadn't come forward to the questions I'll be asking you. And then we'll check to see if the employers appear to ask any questions of you. Uh, if, if not, then uh, we would uh, bring in your witnesses if that testimony would be deemed necessary, in which case, again, I would uh, try to get them on the phone. Uh, I would um, ask them my questions first. I'll give you a chance when I'm done to ask all the questions you would have with them. Again, we would check to see if the employers here appear to ask any uh, ask any uh, questions on them. And uh, if not, then once we finish with all the testimony and evidence on your behalf, our hearing will be closed. So at this point, do you have any questions about either the issue for today or how we're going to proceed with the remainder of the hearing? Any uh, questions before we resume, sir? Uh, I don't have any questions at this time. Okay. Uh, then if you would... Uh, Raise your right hand to take the oath. We'll resume with your testimony. Uh, Mr. Taylor, do you uh, solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in the saying to be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, and if you want to just state your name so we have you identified on the recording. Uh, first name King, last name Taylor, middle initial S for Sean. Okay. Uh, now, Mr. Taylor, um, again, I just have a couple of questions here to quickly go over with you. Uh, starting with, uh, based on what I heard in the last hearing, um, do you know, was there any days that you were scheduled to uh, be at work that you would have missed? Mm, if, uh, being that we scheduled a week, like, the prior week out, if I had any upcoming doctor's appointments that had to be scheduled, uh, like, mm -hmm. You know, like if I had a doctor appointment that may have been where I needed to be seen and they was, they were scheduling two or three weeks out or maybe even a month or two or three out, like some of the facilities where I had to treat at, uh, I, I did give them uh, ample notice, I would say. If I did need to go to a doctor's appointment and I, and I would always bring back a doctor's note to show that I was at the doctor's office. Okay, then let me ask you, would there have been any days you would have missed that were not because of a medical condition? No. And what is the nature of your medical condition? Oh, uh, I have multiple conditions. I, uh, I have social security disability under appeal as of right now, federally, so I'm looking at probably another one to two years before they even get it on the docket. 
I was a, I was abrupt, I was just abruptly cut off of social security and I've I made the employer aware of all of my of my conditions and whatnot before I even took the position there. Okay, so what kind of medical conditions do you have? Oh, I have two deter I have one slip disc, one deteriorating disc. T one is chipped from a knife stabbing. I have asthma, lung nodules, uh, left toe was fused back in, let's see, that would have been August of 2015. Uh, I still have uh, problems with that. The that was your left toe? Yeah, my left toe was fused surgically. Also, I have um, frequent migraines that come and go. And... Uh, that's pretty much all, as of right now. Okay. I've had I had right. rotator cuff yeah. surgery in the past. That's that's how I ended up on Social Security from the beginning. It was mainly from me being stabbed in a car accident. Followed up right after the right. Like, probably like a few months after the stab and a head on collision. And when was that? That would have been uh, uh, April 2nd of 2010, and the stabbing would have been May 2nd of 2009. Okay, and um, then, um, um, then why don't we just go over quickly the Social Security? I think that will cover, cover all my questions for you. So, um, so, was this Social Security a retirement or a disability? Both. Which is okay. where it kind of got confusing. Uh, I had enough paid in because I did start working when I was 13 years old. So, I had enough paid in to receive Social Security SSA survivor benefits, which would have been 5 50 a month and then the other 200 was compensated in SSI which was like $220 a month so when I was receiving my benefits they had me on both they had me on SSA and SSI or what they call okay. SSD yeah <clears throat> so I ended up I ended up being given full Medicare uh, November 2015 November 2015, they said they were going to give me, they had decided to give me full Medicare because I had worked while I was disabled, which is legal. As long as you report your wages and or let a report that you want to work, start a work trial period. Uh, anyhow, I had ended up earning enough credit hours even while being disabled to receive full Social Security. So they bumped me up to 953 a month only for one month. Just to be found unfavorable in the month of January the eighth, when my of 2016, when my Social Security was uh, all my Medicare and Social Security benefits were suspended. And why was this suspended? They said that uh, I was able to work a level one or level two job, which is what the vocational uh, rehabilitation evaluator at my last reevaluation hearing for Social Security stated. Which that was never in, that was never in question was was okay. that wasn't ever in question of my social security was was if I was able to work a level one or level two job the judge that ordered my social me disabled in the beginning already stated that I was able to find job uh, work through vocational rehabilitation or BAWAC, which is what he put in the original war letter or I could go the, and then they advised me to find work outside of there. Because of my age and my uh, education status, so you see what I mean. It was like I don't, I don't understand this at all. But it was like a catch twenty twos, and they suspended my benefits because then they decided that in twenty sixteen I wasn't disabled anymore, even though I just had two surgeries prior to being cut off of Social Security. Okay, sir. Um, that's all my questions for you. Is there anything else then? about this that you want to tell me or you need to answer? Anything else? Uh, no, but I was denied from the appeals branch of Social Security in Leesburg, Virginia. So that's why my last step was, and that didn't, I didn't get that notification until January 15th of uh, 2017. 
then they had left medical records out and sent me another notification in April stating that I, they denied me again even though they reconsidered the first decision from January. So it left me no other choice but to file this in federal court and uh, f see if it can be worked out that way. Okay. Anything else, sir? Uh, that's pretty much all for right now, but um, let's see here. Oh yes, and I did make the employers aware of this also before I start before taking the position, and then also I was given the opportunity to transfer January the seventeenth to the Colerain Honda location to be an oil lube tech, uh, which is what I was doing before I started at Jeff Weiler. I was doing that at Quick Stop. Uh, anyhow, due to me having to have scrotal surgery, I lost my job there due to that also. And then I started at Jeff Weiler, had or had the scrotal surgery after I lost my job at Quick Stop. Then I started at Jeff Weiler after the doctor cleared me to go back to work from the scrotal surgery that I had in uh, October. And then I spoke with the corporate office of Jeff Weiler, and they stated that I was able to transfer to Colerain Honda to be an oil loop tech, and I would have received two or three more dollars on the hour. The only problem that came in was that King's Auto Mall Nissan uh, called me the same day that Jeff Weiler uh, Honda called me for to give me the job employment opportunity. So once I spoke with corporate, they said I had to make a decision on which one I wanted to choose, and they would help me make that decision because King's Auto Mall needed to help more than uh, Corain Honda. So I, they said if I started there, that I would have the option to transfer to Corain Honda after uh, January the 17th. But I didn't quite get to reach that full employment stage to January the 17th to speak with corporate to see if I could take them up on that offer of being transferred to Corain Honda because they were going to let me work part-time there. But the compensation would have been like full-time benefits or full-time payment or full-time work. So if I would have did 25 hours a week there making $13 an hour, it would have been less work than the 40-plus hours that Jeff Weiler wanted me to do. That I did do. Excuse okay. me. Okay, anything else, Mr. Taylor? Nope, that'll pretty much be all. I appreciate your time and your help. Let me check, let me check here and see if the employer is here to ask any questions of you. Just hold on a second. We want from the employer. Okay, they haven't found in, Mr. Taylor. Just a couple of uh, other uh, things here I've been to couple just going to ask you about. You listed three potential witnesses. At this point, based on what you told me, I don't have any questions for any of them. Is there anything that you feel specifically you would need to have to bring in one of your witnesses? Uh, yes, I just want them to, the witnesses or all, all managers with the exception, I believe, of maybe Mr. Gene Maggard because he works in the parts department. Uh, but Brian Fallhaber is a s new car sales manager, which is the department I was assigned to. And also Carl Warren uh, began employment there around the same time that I did. He's also a new car sales manager. So, I mean, I, f I followed all of their orders. I wasn't terminated due to discipline or any, you see what I mean, any any other type of actionary problem. <laughs> Or attendance. And, and, and I appreciate that, I appreciate that Mr. Taylor. And if we had the, if the employer was here saying you were, I would probably want their testimony. But since the employer is not here to contradict anything you're telling me, um, all we got, that's what I'd be getting is getting cumulative testimony, which is not required. Which is why I say I don't really need their testimony today. I understand. The other guy must be told me. Yes. Okay. Um, then one last matter here. Um, that, uh, that I want to address with you. It's a procedural matter, but listening to the last hearing, um, the, the referee had added into the record two documents, uh, but did not give you an opportunity to object to those. Um, the first of those was the, uh, um, we had the uh, fact-finding report uh, that came from when you thought your claim as well as the most recent employer information as pages uh, nine and 10 of the packet. Uh, and so, um, do you, uh, first off, do you know what documents I'm referring to?
only two heroes. They weren't sent out for this turn. They've been full last turn. Uh, may have them. You said this doc, Derek Page, are they uh, numbered? Yeah, the upper, top, upper right hand corner would say page, it would say page 9, which is a fact finding report, page 10, which is the most recent employer information. Would that be the rebuttal page? No, sir, it is not. It is the, uh, it's called the UI 408 fact finding report, and uh, that's page 9 in my packet. Now, it might, have been, it might be page 8 and 9 in yours. Sometimes the page number goes off the page or so. And then it would be the, um, and then there's something called the most recent employer information. This that one has the uh, uh, address of the division at the top center and the logo at the upper right hand corner. And this is just information that the division record showing you what you said happened and your and I think she's and the dates uh, and your employment dates on listed on that. Okay, so are you speaking of the? It says employer complete and return this form to the address within fifty. Yeah. Let me, let me see if I can pull that up. That might give me a guide as to where you're at. I don't have that particular page pulled it up. Says right page seven, yeah. and then yeah, I believe that's page seven. Yeah, I think that was page. That's that might be minus page seven. It, it, it would be the pages right after that. One where it says notice to claim uh, notice to employer of claim for unemployment insurance benefits. It would be the following two pages after that. You said the two pages after those. Yes, yeah, sir. You have what the ones I was looking at here. I had rebuttal detail. Then I think, was, which is page three, and then we skip through um, some of the appeals, and then we go back to page eight. Was the one that says notice to employer of claim for unemployment insurance benefits. Uh, that's page eight in my packet. It may be page seven in your packet, but it's a two pages following that. At the top, on page nine, it says UI four hundred eight fact finding report claimant statement, and then the next page, which at the top it has the address, and then it has a form number four hundred one. It says employer complete and return this form. Is that the one you're speaking of? No, sir, that is not the one I'm speaking of. Um, it is, um, let me check here. Then because this is talking about the one. It'll be the two pages right in front of that one. One that says employer please complete and return. It's it's not that page. It's the, one, it's the two pages right in front of that. It says employer complete. Let's see here. Most recent employer information. Yes, that is that is one of those, and that is the page in front of that. In my packet, that is marked as hearing document page ten. It says uh, the appeals rights. No, sir. It's, it's, you have that one right. The most recent employer information is the second of the two pages. It will be the one page right in front of that. See the way it says UI four hundred eight. It says UI. The top it says UI dash four hundred eight I fact finding report. Mm, I don't believe I received a copy of that. I looked through the rest of it. Well, I we see. Had, it I was, see. It was, uh, it, was, it, was in, it was included in the packet. It was mailed out, so I'm pretty sure it was included in the packet. Uh, it asked questions like, "What are your job duties?" Uh, what were, you, uh, were you suspended from the job and you said no? It was, uh, what date were you discharged suspended? It says January 12th and you say who discharged you? You said Chuck, sales manager. You were, you were asked, providing answers to questions that were being posed to you by the division. Oh, okay. I don't think I received it. I see one that says Watts K, K Watts I assume, Appeals Branch, by B Y E, uh, 210. 18? Well, um, let me ask you, do you remember completing your claim and answering questions when you thought your type of benefits, Mr. Uh, Mr. King, yeah. back in February? Yes. Okay, so this is the, this is the document that was just out of the information you provided. You, you have the other page, about the second page, but the other one is just the questions you were asked. Would you have any objection to those documents being made part of the record as an exhibit? So which which records are we speaking of? Uh, the ones I've been discussing with you here for a few minutes. 
Uh, the UI-408 fact-finding report, that's the one you tell me you can't locate. And then the second one is the one you told me you did locate, which is the most recent employer information. Yes. Okay, so do you have any objections to these pages being made part of the record? Oh, okay, here we go. I found, uh, I think that was in a whole different packet. It says, uh, okay. 404 UI408I fact finding report. That is correct, sir. That is, that is correct. That's the other page I've been discussing. Yes, it says, what were my job duties? Duties included, That's correct, sir. Duties included mm -hmm. moving pre-owned and pre-owned vehicles and organizing the storage lots. Duty, duties also That's included. Right. You, you, you have the right page. Do you have any objection to this page being made part of the record as an exhibit? No, I don't have any objection. Okay, and how about the most recent employer information? That's the following page. You said the following page would be which one? It is called the most recent employer information. This is the one you said you already you already told me that you had found it one. So it would be the following page behind the one that you just read. It has the Commonwealth Kentucky letterhead on the top center. It has the Unbridled Spirit logo on the upper right hand corner. Underneath the so address. It says, has no, the it says separation reason, discharge, secondary reason, general, numerous correct, sir. That, numerous documents appointments. That is correct, sir. That is the page. Any objection to it being made part of the record as an exhibit? Given from health providers, have you worked? For yes. Any, any objection to it? That is the page. Any objection to it being made part of the record as an exhibit? No. I'll tell you that without objection. I'll, mark, I'll go ahead and have these marked under this agency exhibit two. They're not part of the record of the hearing. That's all I have for you, Mr. Taylor. Uh, is there anything else then, uh, that you have at this point? Now it says that uh, Rich stated that numer I had numerous doctor's appointments. Rich, it says Rich Garrico. Is that was he, is that his explanation for having Chuck fire me? Uh, are you talking about the information you provided to us? It says numerous, it says numerous doctors' appointments and restrictions given from health providers was asked to stop working due to Christmas vacation time allotted from hiring manager Rich Greco. Exactly. What this is, that is a statement that the vision records show you made to the division when you filed the claim. Not what the employer said, but what you said. Yeah, it wasn't Rich that fired me, though. Okay, well, I, 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 I appreciate that, sir. Uh, but what, I, I'm, I'm just trying to answer your question. This is just the information that, the, that you provided to the division when you filed your claim. So is there anything else that you need to cover, we need to cover, Mr. Taylor? Yeah, that's incorrect information. It wasn't Rich that fired me. It was actually Chuck, the sales manager. Okay. Okay, I think you covered that in the last session. Anything else then, sir? And then uh, I guess that's pretty much it. Okay, and I'm here for the employer. Let me just verify it's you and I. Okay, um, the employer didn't find in. I have no more questions for you. Is there anything else you have to say or present to Mr. Taylor before we close the hearing today? Uh, that's all for today. I do appreciate the time and your help. Now, okay, let the record show all testimony has been taken in this case. The hearing is now closed. Uh, I appreciate your time as well, sir. Uh, since we've closed the hearing, we're off the record. You're excused and free to go. Uh, thanks again, and uh, we'll be getting a copy of the decision out in the mail to you as soon as we possibly can. So thanks for your time again, and, uh, and uh, you're free to go. Bye-bye.